Example 2.6. Determine the voltage Vx and the power delivered to the 10 ohm resistor. Following process outlined during lecture, this dependent circuit, dependent source circuit will require a dependent condition, which I call the DC, to solve this circuit. So let's go look at this thing. So the first thing that I see here is that I want to treat the voltage control voltage source, which is the three VX source, like any other source. And when I look at that thing, you could see here is that I have three sources in series. Right? So here we go. So what you're seeing here is that I have I want I have three series sources. So if I look at this thing, look what happens. So if I look at this guy, I'm going to pick a direction. And I'm going to focus on the VX. So if I look at the VX, you could see here that implies that the current is going in that direction right there. So I'm going to call that the current I. And I'm just using that polarity. So then you could see that the current continues to flow like this here. So we're saying here, so we're using the sign of Vx to determine loop slash current direction. So once I have that, now I'm gonna apply KVL. So then if I apply KVL, that tells me here is that for this series loop, here I go. So the first thing I see here is I see a positive 3VX. I keep going, I see a positive 30. And I keep going all the way around, I get minus three. So then this equivalent source here is gonna be 3VX plus 27. And that's gonna be my V series. So the other thing that I see here in this circuit is that note, there are three resistors. There are three resistors, but Vx is defined by the five ohm. So that implies you cannot put this resistor into any equivalences. So you could see here, so then I have the 10 and the 15, so then I can replace the 10 and the 15 with the single 25 ohm. So let's redraw the circuit then. So if I redraw the circuit, it looks like this. I'm gonna have V series, and that V series is equal to three VX plus 27. 
So now I have a dependent source that looks like this. And I have a 25 ohm resistor. And then I have my 5 ohm that looks like this. But this is how we defined Vx. And you can see here is that the current is moving in the counterclockwise direction. So this is my current I. So what you're seeing here, that in order to solve this circuit, what I'm gonna have to do here, since it's a series one, I'm gonna apply um, KVL. So now if I apply KVL, we get, so going in the direction of the loop here, here I go. So if I start off with my source here, it's gonna be plus 3VX plus 27. I'm gonna come all the way around and then I'm gonna get a plus VX. And then look at the polarity. That's plus and minus for the 25. So that has to be the voltage of that 25. But I can rewrite the voltage of that 25 using Ohm's law. So this should be 25 times I. So if I look at this thing, I can add the VXs. So I'm going to get 4VX plus 27 plus 25I is equal to zero. So this is what KVL gives us. So what you're seeing here is that note, I have VX, which is an unknown, and I have I, which is an unknown. In other words, there's two unknowns, which is VX and I, and one equation. This is an unsolvable equation. And then this guy, I'm gonna call equation one. So what you're seeing here is that this is what typically happens in dependent sources. Not necessarily all the time, but it's, it's a pretty, it's a good way to think about it. So every time Um, a dependent source appears in a circuit in extra unknown pops up. Because of this, this is unsolvable. As it stands. So in order to solve this, we need a second equation. So this implies here is that we need a second equation with the same two variables. In this case, it's Vx and I. So now we get to step two. And this is known as the dependent condition. So to get this second equation,
one applies a DC. So the way you get this DC here is you go to the dependent voltage, which is VX, and then come up a relationship between VX and VI. So starting at the, the um, dependent controlling voltage Vx determine a relationship via this element between Vx and I. And when we look at that circuit here, you could see that the current running through the five ohm is the current I and the voltage is Vx. So in this case, our DC here is derived from Ohm's law. And what it says here is that the voltage of the five ohm, which is the voltage of Vx, is also equal to five I. Or I'm going to rewrite this so that it reads Vx minus. No, I'm going to write it as 5i minus Vx equals to zero. So this guy is our DC equation, which I'm going to label this as equation two. Now we have two equations, right? One and two, and two unknowns, which are Vx and I. So if I put that together, I have equation one, and this reads 25I plus four Vx equals to minus 27, and then if I look at equation two, well, this guy reads 5i minus vx equals to zero. Now I can add these equations. And so if I come in here and I say, I'm gonna take this equation and I gotta multiply it by minus five. So then I, if I add them now, I have 25i minus 25i. So I'm gonna get zero. So then I got five, times uh, minus minus Vx, so then I'm gonna get five Vx. So then if I add these, this is gonna give me nine Vx, and then this is gonna give me minus 27. So then I can easily solve this for Vx, which will then be minus three volts. So now that I have the voltage, I could go in and I can solve for the current or the power of the 10 ohm resistor. So to get the power of the 10 ohm resistor, we see that because this is in series here, we could then come in here and we could say that the power of the 10 ohm should be the current of the 10 ohm squared times the resistance of the 10 ohm. But I know that, that the, according to the, our dependent condition, that Vx is equal to five I. So if I put this in here, you're gonna see that now this current is then gonna be reading what here? It's going to be reading the current is then going to be Vx divided by five quantity squared times 10. So therefore I'm going to get what? I'm going to get nine. So I'm going to get, what is that? Three squared times 10. That's going to be 90 divided by 25. So I'm going to get 90 
divided by 25 watts, and that's going to be the power of the 10 ohm. And of course, it's passive, 